I'm Norman Fenson from the Risk and Information <coughs> Management Group. And uh, well, I'm just going to try and get across this point that um, big data is not necessarily the answer to most risk assessment problems. In fact, I believe it's not the answer to almost any of them. Um, but smart data is. Um, example, which customers are most likely to default on a bank loan? Which customers are most likely to cancel their Sky subscription? Which patients are most likely to suffer a particular medical condition? So these are all classic examples where actually big data has been used, well, with some uh, reasonable success in either risk scoring or risk assessment systems. What happens in each case is that basically you collect, you have a database of either customers or patients with a whole bunch of profile or risk factors. Okay, and what the machine learning and the uh, you know, the machine learning algorithms and the statistical analysis does is effectively build you a kind of, in most cases, not a particularly fancy statistical model, in most cases, just something like a regression model, but it will give you, it will build you a model which is basically relates the, the risk profile factors to the outcome of interest, right? Um, and the problem is, they get you, this gets you so far that, um, not that far, there is the reason the results are actually quite poor in general is because they fail to capture causal explanations. And the failure to do that actually means they're incredibly bad models for risk assessment. So, just got a, a simple um, video running through an example model. So imagine that you've got a bunch of risk factors. So this is what the machine has learned. You've got, you start to observe these factors, starting from the low, you look at the outcome. So this could be a, you know, critical medical condition, you're wondering whether the outcome's going to be bad. As the risk factors increase here, as they're getting, they're just simulating through, that all of the risk factors are getting sort of higher risk factors. So as expected, this outcome is likely to be worse. But now something weird happens. At the highest level, this starts to stabilise and actually comes down. Right? So in the worst case, when the risk factors are worse, how have we somehow, uh, how's the outcome actually improved rather than got worse? Well, actually, it's because it's hiding, it's hiding a causal factor, in this case, an intervention. So what we're going to do is, show, is reveal the actual, what's happening with the intervention, and run that same kind of model again, but revealing what's happening here. So again, we start with the lowest possible risk factor, so the outcome's going to be good. As this increases now, what's happening is the chance of an intervention is going up, <coughs> as the outcome is going up, right? As the risk factor is now going to be increasingly worse, so the heart they're higher, the probability of intervention is getting higher. And now the critical thing, you get almost a switch at the very high levels, suddenly the probability of intervention becomes almost certain. So the bad outcome is, is basically mitigated because actually what's happening is that an expert, right, who's inf the information about this intervention is not recorded in the data. Oh, oh it doesn't matter, I'll tell you what it is. Um, what's, all, what's happened here is take, for example, a medical condition. So everything's bad, right? But this is all of these, actually, the examples I cited are all based on real examples that we've been involved with where, where something like this has gone wrong. So you get a classic kind of like um, a medical scoring system, you know, someone, a trauma that comes from a head injury, you know, trauma department. All of the risk factors are, you know, You've got these various risk factors that you're looking at. For some reason, when they're really bad, the outcome suddenly is, is, not that, is actually pretty good. Right? So you think, OK, if you're going to use that for risk assessment, then maybe the really bad patients actually somehow do miraculously do better. Well, of course, what's happened is that they know they've got to make a, an urgent intervention. Those are the ones who get the most urgent treatment quickly. In the case of the things like the, uh, um, the Sky um, uh, subscription churn, of course, what happens is that the people on customer service, they know, they know the customers who are most at risk because they're the ones who've been complaining or whatever. So they make a phone call to them, right? And their intervention for the most ones, the ones most critically at risk is what's doing the flip. So basically, by building these, um, what we're able to do is build these causal models as a mixture of the data and the knowledge, which not only gives you the predictions, but also gives you the genuine risk assessment and the risk management that you haven't got with the pure data learned models. Thank you.